the addition of music to image creates a reality which is often missing if it's just visuals. And what music brings is an emotional content and an ability to transport the viewer, the audience, into that dimension. Music has a way of having an input directly into the subconscious. In a film, what counts is the image. Et la musique devient une sorte d'image. La musique donne de l'espace à l'image. Mais elle n'est pas de la musique, elle est de l'image entendue. So la musique apporte cette capacité de suspendre le temps et aussi de donner une kind of suspension de disbelief à l'image que, si vous n'avez pas la musique là, c'est très difficile de faire avec l'autre élément que le film comprise, qui est visuals, lighting, camera angles, because everything, of course, has to tell the story. Everything's tethered to the narrative. Eh bien, comme je disais, la, la musique est, un, est, est, est une manipulation du temps. Euh, et si le, le film, et si l'histoire visuelle travaille avec le concept de temps, la musique, à ce moment-là, va aider, va être un partenaire intéressant. Usually there are two kinds of music. This is something called source, which means the music the actors or the characters in the film could or would be able to hear. Um, and under, um, underscore is anything they wouldn't be able to. There's a very funny way to remember this. In the first Muppets movie, uh, when they find, when the, when the Muppets find there's no work in, in Hollywood, they set off to find work in Bollywood, which is where they've heard there, there is work. And as they're riding down the truck, underscore, the orchestra begins to play and, and they start to look around, like, where is that music coming from? And it's a very good way of remembering which is which, because they would never, in the real situation, be able to hear it, because not only was it not there when the film was shot, but it's underscore, it, it is not, not actually physically there. So background music in that sense, underscore sense, um, can set up a scene in a number of ways. So that if you're going from a tense scene to quite a light-hearted scene, the music in the tense scene can suddenly disappear on the transition, allowing the slightly light-hearted scene to be much more pronounced. Or it can carry over into the next scene in which case, the values of the previous scene will go over with it. Le son est, euh, est, est porteur de, de temps. Le son est une aventure temporelle. Et l'image aussi. L'image se développe dans le temps. Alors, il peut y avoir des associations très intéressantes sur le plan de la perception du temps, sur la manière dont on, on attend et on glisse dans le temps, porté par une vague de sons, avec donc des, une énergie qui se, dé, qui se déploie euh, et qui peut quelquefois s'associer à l'énergie de l'image. À la fin des années 70s, um, at this time, with uh, VCR, it was possible for the first time to uh, uh, to re uh, re observe, re observe the films, uh, uh, to sh to uh, to choose the sequence, to to cut sounds, uh, to, to to observe the relationship between sound and image. East London now is very exciting. I think it's only after a and after that, I created a lot of new concepts for describing uh, the audiovisual relationships, particularly in the field of, uh, of cinema. So how it creates the emotional response is limited by certain things. But I think at the moment, it would be very hard for anyone to pin it down, put their finger on and say, this is how the neurons respond, this is what the cultural norms are. So providing you have, you know, you have two and two, it'll always equal four. It never does. Uh, so the best you can hope to do is to guide the listener to a point where the intended emotional response is possible, but never guaranteed.
La musique est indispensable dans le film quand il y a besoin de manifester l'attente, l'angoisse, l'espace, la, la, la durée. Par exemple, une chambre vide avec un rideau, le vent qui soulève le rideau. Alors la musique là, indispensable, parce qu'elle va colorer, elle va faire que ce rideau soit innocent, soit gai, au contraire soit très dramatique, ça va, sera extrêmement terrifiant. On va se demander si c'est un assassin qui arrive ou qu est -ce, quel, quel est le... Par contre, si, la musique, si le film est un film purement d'action, où il y a des échanges entre les gens, des, des, des courses, des, des, des échanges de paroles, etc., la musique n'est pas nécessaire. Parce que le problème du temps est réglé par le processus de, de la conversation ou de la poursuite. Genre most definitely dictates how a composer approaches the score. In other words, the way the composer organizes his or her scales, the kind of harm harmonies they're drawn from those scales, it have to fall into the conventions of the genre. If you have a very dark scene taking place in a very dark way being shot in close up, it is unlikely that you'll be playing very light-hearted music against that, although in certain situations that may well give you a very, a very good result. It's called playing in counterpoint. But by and large, genre requires some specific approaches. It's very hard to talk to many directors just in terms of them not recognizing there's such a thing as genre in music. Although they, of course they'd recognize there's such a thing as genre in uh, costume or in the movies itself, in the movie itself. Of course they know what kind of movie they're making. Um, I think there's an unwillingness to do that and I think that's to do with the whole emotional strength of music. The fact that music creates, can create a very strong emotion. And I think people are almost in denial about the the, the fact that music is also subject to genre like anything else. technique de Wagner, c'est un personnage sonore qui, qui revient avec, toujours avec euh, le même petit morceau de mélodie. Oui, c'est un, un truc pour euh, reconnaître et pour faire avancer le récit. Si vous regardez dans les scores, vous allez trouver, encore et encore et encore, que le compositeur a mis en place certains thèmes, ou un rythme même, ou un groupe de notes, qui n'est pas un thème full qui est associé avec le personnage. Bien sûr, le motif de la lumière peut être Uh, associated with a character or a thing um, or even in some cases an, an event so that, that when you want to resurrect any of those things or to, to speak about any of those things or to develop a character of those things you can just go back to the life motive and simply develop it. Quite often when I'm teaching, I will just walk over to the piano. I'll say to the students, okay, I'm going to play you two notes, and I want you to tell me what, what, what the film is. So I'll go to the piano and I'll play two very low notes, and I go, da da. And of course, everybody immediately knows it's yours, and that's the power of a leitmotiv. Je ne fais pas d'opéra et je n'ai pas besoin de ça. Il l'a déjà fait. On a d'autres idées maintenant. I have used leitmotivs a lot um, because it's a very quick and a very economical and a very musical way of establishing character. Par contre, ça il y a quelque chose qui est proche, c'est que on utilise, moi j'utilise beaucoup 
des personnages rythmiques ou des personnages, des figures qui sont comme des fonctions de reconnaissance, oui. Just on a normal human level, I think directors um, can't talk very articulately about music except for music that they particularly like. And on another level, I don't think anybody gives them any training in how to use music. And it's assumed that you go and find a BBC sound effects record and you find a bit of music on a Brian Eno record that you've liked for ages and it fits miraculously. Of course, one of the things about music is that lots of music fits the same scene. You can find half a dozen cues and they all work with that scene. And it's just music you find on a CD somewhere. Uh, nothing new, nothing interesting. Why? Because that's like in real life. In real life, every, everything can happen. Huh? The sound can, can come, this is perfect cow. But why not? But it's not why you are using your loudspeakers on, uh, and screens for recreating the same situation of... I've known this time. Unfortunately, now, the music and the cinema have diverged. And the cinemas have not really need to use contemporary musicians and the music. They prefer to use sound brutes or Wagner. They prefer to use the sound brutes or Wagner. Ou du, du Strauss.